So for a recent project, we're looking at creating these bubbles coming out of a piece of fruit. And I thought this would be a great topic for a tutorial because it shows you how to deal with pop. So let's dive right into it. So the first thing you want to do is create down a geometry node and drop a sphere in there. Because I want to start with a simple piece of geometry before we pipe in a more complex piece of geometry, like a lime or a lemon or an apple or whatever you really want to put in. It's Houdini's procedural, so we can just do how we want it. So the first thing what we need to do is create these cuts in the mesh. And we have a really easy tool for that, which is called Poly Slice. And it does what it says. It just slices up your mesh into polygons. And you can set it to a beatbox here. By default, it works for the sphere. But yeah, you can set it to whatever it is. I think actually a lemon would be more like 30 centimeter radius, I guess. Maybe less, maybe two, I don't know, something smaller. So you can set it to that. You can adjust the number of slices in here. I think I just want to have six or something like that. So this works. And then in order to see it a bit better, you can add an exploded view and automatically it works. Sometimes it doesn't work like this because you have to use the slice ID name that we use here. So we can like plug this in and then it should work for everyone. So this is our base shape, and this is what we're going to use for our collisions in the particle network later. You can add a poly extrude to the slices, and that's entirely possible. And so you can set the distance to go in a bit, then output the back, and then we need to reverse the normals again. And that's a way to do it. Obviously, this looks a bit like car ties at the moment, but with a bit of work, with a bit of love, you can create something nice nice for this and alternatively you can also think about like beveling the edges and you can output some of these boundary groups for that but anyway let's not get sidetracked here so i want to put down a couple of nulls because we want to use some of the geometry for collision and we want to use some of the geometry for the sourcing of the particles so first of all i'm going to get rid of the extrude again but this will work the same and therefore also of the reverse and this is my basic geometry so I want to drop down a null here and say in geo because we want to use the volume of this to generate the particles. And what I can say here is maybe out fruit object, whatever you want. Let's align this. And now let's start a new network. So first let's rename this to fruit. Then I'm going to drop down another geometry node. You could do this in the same node, but if you want to render later in Solaris, it's a bit easier to do it in different nodes because you can use the instances as a point instances in Solaris. So it would just help you with that later on. First thing I want to do is get our source geometry back. So I go to an object merge, which basically just plugs in other objects into this object. And I say in geo. And if you hide other objects, we now see we have a geo. Obviously I could do drop down the sphere, but if we want to make this procedural that we can also pipe in like other geometry sources, then this will keep working. Then the node we need to create points is a points from volume. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to generate the points first and then use those points in a particle network instead of sourcing them in the particle network. Because that way I think it's a bit more art directable and a bit easier to navigate later on. So here you can say the amount of points you want. I think for bubbles, you want to go like relatively low, maybe to something like this. And you want to up the jitter because as you can see now, it's all like perfectly in a grid, but we want to have it a bit random. So let's set the jitter to one. And what we then want to do is we want to change the P skill. So this, the skill of the points or the particles. I'm not, I'm still to this day, not sure what it stands for. I think point, point skill. So basically in this one, we want to pipe in the points. And in this one, we want to pipe in the geometry to copy. First of all, let me set this to a primitive. So it's very lightweight. It's just a point. And let's set this to pack an instance. So it's a bit faster. And we can see now we have an absolutely massive spheres. So yeah, if we pipe in an attribute noise or randomize could work as well, whatever floats your boat. And set this to a float value because P skill is a single value. So it's a float. And let's post process this. So we want to have values that are more in the range of 0 0.01. This is probably still too big. 
0.02. You kind of have to make a decision for yourself, like versus your geometry, how big you think bubbles would look like in that scene. But yeah, minimum could be 0 0.01.3. And the thing is they all have the same size now, which is because the element size is really, really big now. So if you want to shrink like these individual particles, we need to like scale down the noise quite substantially. Maybe even further. Let's see if we offset it. And then zero centered seem to have better results. So now you can see we're getting quite a few different values. Again, an attribute randomized could work as well maybe for this. I could do the same thing here. So you just set the p-scale. It's a one dimension. And again, let's use something like 0 0.03. Plug that in there, maybe 0 0.01 in there. And if you then hook it up to copy to points, you can see we get the random bit. So it's whatever whatever works for you. I think we need a bit more points. If I'm seeing this, it's a bit sparse. Again, it's, it, it's the look you're going for. I want to have quite a dense kind of like bubble, like a real kind of explosion of bubbles. And you can see this is quite a lot. Maybe let's up it slightly, but then later we can always change this. That's why I like doing it like this. So whenever we're happy, we can maybe lay down a null so we can change it later and say in. Then we lay down a pop network. So we just select this and then pop network, shift enter, will automatically attach. And if we dive in, there's a few things we want to do. First of all, we want to set the emission type. Instead of scattering onto surfaces where it would just scatter points on input. So normally when you lay down a grid, it would just scatter points on that grid. We want to say use all points. So now we use the points that we put into the simulation as emission. And actually we want to get rid of this copy to points because we just want the points and the copy to points need to come back later after the simulation. And now you can see we have all these points. The problem what we're having is now we're having 9,000 points and now we have at frame 10, we have 98 and a half thousand points because every single frame it's emitting more points which we don't want. So to, in the birth, we said the activation is $FF is, is one or $F would work as well, actually. And what this does is it would only emit particles in frame one. So let's test this and see if it will stay the same. And the count is still the same, so that works. And what's left now is one, let's add a force. So the particles are actually doing something. So let me just add a simple pop force to it. I want the bubbles to move up, kind of like sparkling water or something like that. It always moves up to the surface. So if I set a force of one, these will just move up simply like that. Actually, let's hide the guides as well. So we just see what happens with the points. But obviously you want some variation in that. So in order to do that, you can set some amplitude in the noise. So we get a bit of turbulence. And now you can see we get a bit of randomness, which it's quite nice. You can turn it down a bit smaller in the swirl size because it's quite a small scale animation. It will probably benefit from that. And that's it for the basic, basic stuff. You can possibly set the force to something lower. Again, it's it's kind of what whatever you wanna whatever you wanna do with it. And you kind of activate the guts as well to kind of roughly know what it's doing. But yeah, the, it's a bit small for my taste. Anyway, so that's one thing. And secondly, we need to bring in our collisions from the fruit we're having. So in order to do that, we need a static solver because the pop solver solves the pop force <laughs> and then the static solver solves the collisions. And for that, we need a static object as well that actually brings in the object. And then we merge that with our pop solver. So if we merge this in and that in, and then we want the static solver first and then the pop solver second. It's one of the few places in Houdini that Actually, the, whatever you put in first actually matters quite a bit. Kind of emerges and stuff, it doesn't really matter, but for pops it does. So yeah, static first, first solve the collisions and then the solver. So for the static object, we just want to point that to our fruit, which we created a null for out fruit. So accept. So what it shows now is geometry, but this is deceiving because pops don't use the geometry. They use a VDB, which is a volume, in order to calculate the collisions. So if you want to see what's happening under the hood, you need to activate the collision guide. And then you can see we get something very ugly. This is what our collisions look like now, which is really what we don't want. So we want to set the division method. So this is basically how it generates a volume from the geometry you're putting in. And I want to set it to by size. And I just want to lower the division size 
so the mesh is higher resolution and this is still not good and if i lower it again still not good and i think the issue we're running into now is we're having a flat surface where a volume is usually a 3d mesh <laughs> so it's not flat it's actually like has depth in it so i'm gonna add that to the simulation if houdini doesn't crash <laughs> all right and houdini did crash so <laughs> be careful be careful what you're doing in houdini because it can always crash so let's go back to our geometry so maybe let's call this bubbles or whatever set a quick mark if we hit Control command one we set a quick mark here and Control command two we set a quick mark here and now if i tap if I hit one back in our geometry. And what I could do actually for our collisions is I could just attach a poly extrude here. So just give it a tiny bit, a tiny bit of distance, just so the VDBs will pick it up. Let's see what's happening here. That's way too much. It's maybe half that. Just so it has the tiniest kind of distance. And I think in real life, you kind of want to invert this anyway because also fruit is cut. So I think it's quite nice if you generate a bit of an inside geometry for this. So let's just keep it very small and reverse it. And then we can attach another null with like out collision. That's cool. Then hit two and we're back in our simulation. And here I'm gonna reference it to out call. So after a few more crashes, <laughs> I realized that this is division size of 0.0035 for both of me. And basically if we test the simulation now, we can see it nicely like collides with our geometry and that's kind of all we want. So now when we go back up, we can highlight this. So we can see our copy two points and this is kind of the size of the bubbles, what it would look like. And if we go to our other object, we can see this is looking quite nice and neat now. So that's kind of like in a nutshell, how it would go around these air bubbles. You could have a go at it in vellum as well, but I think pops work so much faster so fella might be a bit of an overkill and if we want to change the poly extrude now or the exploded view it's quite far away now so i could just set it to 0 0.04 then we could just re-simulate and this should now work so it's kind of like a nicely automated system for this i think a slow motion shot on this could be cool so you can set the time frame inside your pop solver and here you can if you scale this down, you get like more of a slowed down behavior. So that could be a cool thing to try out. And other than that, if you want to swap it in now with an object of your choice, you could just bring in some geometry. I like to use mega scans for this and have apples, green lime, lemon, other stuff. And I can just drag this in with the object browser and just say to use material X. As I'm using Karma now as my render, we can use Redshift or anything like that as well. And basically you can delete the material if you're going to render in Solaris. Keep the mudnet just to steal the material <laughs> we put in there. And in the attribute delete, what I figured out is sometimes all these attributes we're importing, like the FBX rotation and scale, can mess a bit with the poly slice and some other things further down the line. So I quite like to just delete all these primitive attributes and maybe also the detail attributes and maybe also just like the FBX attributes. So now we're just left with the normals and the points. And as you can see now, the apple's quite a bit smaller. So we can either scale it up a bit and fake it, or we can just put this in like this and then use the poly slice, hit the button to set it to the bounding box. So you could just set it here to the bounding box and then everything should update. So that's it. If you want me to dive deeper on these particle networks, please leave a comment and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.